I'm Alex Forsyth. I built a particle accelerator and a supercomputer to monitor and control the particle accelerator. Earlier, I posted a video explaining in simple terms what my project is and how it works. Now, I'm going to do the technical version, which is this. This is for all my fellow engineers out there. The supercomputer is also known as a Beowulf cluster. The mini particle accelerator centers around a CRT. I'll explain this project in three parts. The building, configuring, and programming of the cluster, the building and configuring of the accelerator, and how the two work together. To build the cluster, first I needed to design it. I read a number of articles on the subject of parallel processing clusters and decided to build my cluster from 10 Raspberry Pis. I used Model 1B Plus Pis because of the lower cost and they had all the features I needed. I had a computer power supply from another project which I knew would work for the Pis. In order to network the Pis, I purchased an inexpensive 16-port switch so that I could run them in parallel across a local Ethernet network. Last, I wanted to make sure the Pis didn't overheat, so I purchased two fans. They have LEDs, so they have the added benefit of looking really cool. Once I had all the hardware components, I had to lay out a compact design to hold all of the equipment as well as the fans. Also, I needed a way to connect the power from my power supply to the Pis. So I designed, laid out, and built a CCA, or circuit card assembly, to power the Pis using their USB ports. The board I designed connects the power supply through a SATA connector. I built two copies, each capable of connecting to five stacked Pis. I also built a spare copy of the power board in case anything went wrong with either of the other two boards. Finally, I mounted the hardware on the wooden base and mounted the fans in the plexiglass walls. Next, I moved to loading the operating systems onto the Pis. This is where things got tricky. I studied what was available and found that Arc Linux is a compact, bloat-free version of the Linux operating system that should run well on the Pi cluster. Raspberry Pis use micro SD cards to load operating systems and files. As a result, I needed to determine how I could load Arc Linux onto the micro SDs. As it ends up, loading Arc Linux onto a micro SD directly from a Windows PC isn't very easy. It is much easier to load Ubuntu, a version of Linux, onto a USB flash drive. I accomplished this by using Rufus to load Ubuntu onto the USB. Then, I booted my PC in Ubuntu. Once in a Linux-based system, I partitioned a micro SD card, then loaded Arc Linux. Then, I switched my computer back to Windows and used an image copying program called Win32 Disk Imager to replicate nine copies of the Arc Linux micro SD card, one for each Pi in the cluster. I installed them to the Pis in the cluster, and I was happy to see that they all booted properly. But I wasn't out of the woods yet. There were more challenges ahead. In order to make the Pis into a cluster that could be used for parallel processing, several steps were required. First, I set up login accounts for each of the Pis. Then, I had to configure each Pi with a unique IP address. I chose addresses at 192.168.1.10 through point nineteen. Because the Pis were not yet networked, I had to attach a monitor and a keyboard to each Pi and individually set the IP addresses. While I was at it, I also uniquely named each of the Pis. I used the names Pi1 through Pi10. The next big step was to get OpenMPI on the Pis. However, I wanted to have quicker access to the Pis rather than connecting to each one every time I wanted to do something. I found that a program called PuTTY can be run on a PC and provide remote access to the Pis through the Ethernet switch in my system. Loading OpenMPI was accomplished via a PuTTY on each Pi in order. I set Pi 1 up so it can be the master node in my parallel processing system. Then, I had to program the Pis so they would recognize each other over the network. This was accomplished by creating a file on Pi 1 that had the addresses for Pis 2 through 10. Before I could start configuring OpenMPI, I had to create some SSH keys, which allow Pi1 to access the other Pis. 
I made both RSA and DSA keys for each Pi, and I loaded them into a file on Pi 1 so it would recognize all of the Pies as soon as it saw them. At this point, I encountered yet another challenge, configuring OpenMPI to allow me to run the system as a cluster. I studied everything I could find online to do this, but had many difficulties. After hours and hours of consultation with experts in the field of parallel processing, I was able to get the configuration correct so that my system would operate as a Beowulf cluster. The last task, but certainly not the easiest, was to load a scripting language on the system. I spent many more hours with experts on this phase. After asking what must have seemed to them like endless questions, I ended up using Python. Of course, Python is a rather easy language to use. Unfortunately, when I loaded Python, I quickly discovered I needed additional software, and it was back to the experts for more consultation and education. To run Python, I had to load a recognized C compiler on the system. Since the Python documentation seemed to favor GCC, GNU Compiler Collection, I found that and loaded it onto my Pies. I also had to load something that would connect my programs to the MPI software. For that, I used MPI for Pi, which is a package that loads onto Python so that Python can more easily connect to MPI on my Pies. Thanks to all of the large team of experts, the supercomputer or Beowulf cluster was finally working. Then it was on to the particle accelerator. The particle accelerator is a small cathode ray tube connected to a driver board that connects to a transformer. In order to build it, I had to do quite a bit of research to understand what I needed. I found a transformer that would meet my needs and put out a high enough voltage. Then I built the driver board. Selecting the parts for this board was critical because of the high voltage that's required to drive the CRT. The driver board itself has voltages as high as 400 volts, so I had to be very thorough. Because of that, I again turned to an industry expert to review the design and the parts I was purchasing. Once I had built the board, it was time to fire it up. I was hoping it wasn't going to literally fire up. It powered up on the first try. I used a function generator to provide the controls to the CRT plates and tune my particle accelerator. The last step in my project was to connect the particle accelerator to my Beowulf cluster and program the cluster to drive the accelerator. Because the Raspberry Pi Z put out is 3.3 volts, I had to AC couple their output to the particle accelerator. I put a 1 microfarad capacitor between the Pi and the accelerator. I wrote a simple program in Python to drive the accelerator, then used MPI to start the program on multiple nodes in the cluster. All told, I spent a great deal of time working this out. Each time I hit an issue, I learned that if I keep reading, find experts, and keep a positive attitude, any issue can be solved. This project had its challenges, but I had a lot of fun with it. I got to meet and seek advice from several brilliant, helpful people, and I learned a lot of new concepts and skills. It's a great project for any engineer, and I highly recommend it. If I had to do it again, there are a few changes I would make. I would design the wooden platform for the particle accelerator to be larger. Given a bigger budget, I would also add more pies. And that's the technical explanation of my project. Thank you very much for listening.